only drawback is rpm meters are not easily available the ones which are available are not accurate the ones which are accurate are very costly so it is not accessible to everyone whereas multimeter is very cheap you can get it from a local market for 250 to 300 bucks okay so this method can be used on any bike which has got a carburetor so it need not necessarily be royal enfield you can use it on any bike and you can extract a proper tune from your machine you can clearly see when the rpm increases the voltage output also increases Hello YouTube this is Dhruva Mundodi and welcome to my channel Mundodi Vlogs so friends in today's video i'll teach you how to tune your bike's carburetor in a proper way so in the past people used to say carburetor tuning is an art and it cannot be mastered by everyone it's not everyone's cup of coffee but in today's video i will teach how each and every one of you can tune your bike's carburetor in a proper way okay so there are few methods in which people tune their carburetors for example few experienced mechanics they will tune the carburetor just by listening to the beat of the engine that depends on the perception of individual because perception differs from individual to individual so i don't think it will be very accurate and few mechanics who have good access to technology they tune the carburetor using rpm meters but the only drawback is rpm meters are not easily available the ones which are available are not accurate the ones which are accurate are very costly so it is not accessible to everyone whereas multimeter is very cheap you can get it from a local market for 250 to 300 bucks okay so this method can be used on any bike which has got a carburetor so it need not necessarily be royal enfield you can use it on any bike and you can extract a proper tune from your machine so every bike comes with a service manual and generally on that service manual they will mention how to tune that bike's carburetor in a proper way in the sense they will give us how many number of rotations of the air fuel mixture screw is required to get a optimum tune from that particular bike but they won't tell us the particular number of rotations they will give us a range now for example in case of my 2016 standard 350 bs3 on the service manual they have clearly mentioned to obtain a proper tune from the carburetor you may have to turn the air fuel mixture screw anti clockwise direction from a fully closed position somewhere in between the range of 2.5 turns to 3.5 turns that means they have not mentioned what number of particular number of rotations is required they have just given the range 2.5 turns to 3.5 turns some somewhere in between that you will get a proper tune so how do we find that point of proper tune so that is where we need devices like this or device like rpm meter or pure experience but i would always rely on technology rather than relying on individual perception so before tuning any bike there are some conditions which has to be met number one being the bike's engine should be warmed up properly because a cold engine won't give you a constant rpm second point is the air filter must be clean and the third point is the spark plugs must be clean so let me start the bike it's better if you can take the bike for a spin so that the engine will be warmed up properly okay so now my bike's engine is cold and you can properly observe that the rpm won't be stable uh, so for your information i am using a pea shooter exhaust it's a genuine royal enfield performance exhaust you can check it on their accessories department website so since my bike's engine is cold the rpm is not constant and it's getting switched off warmed up my engine for a while now you can observe the rpm is very stable but the rpm is very low that is because i have already tuned my bike using this method now i am just showing it back to my viewers so that you can also learn how to tune your bike to get such 
low rpm and very good state of tune now you might be wondering how we can tune our bike carburetor using a multimeter okay so it's a very simple technique this is the rh cover of my royal enfield and this is the wire coming out of the magnet coil okay every bike's magnet coil produces ac current okay and the output of the current depends on the rpm of the bike with the increase of rpm the output of the current also increases and then it goes to a regulator which is somewhere placed inside here over there and there the ac current will be turned into dc current okay from there the current will become regulated and a constant output of voltage is obtained but whereas the ac current which is coming out of the magnet that comes in a different state of tune it depends on the rotations of the engine rpm of the engine when the rpm is high the current uh, output will also be high now what we have to do is we have to find the connector it is somewhere over here i'll show it from the other side now i'll just take this multimeter and stick it over here using a double sided tape so it will be easier for me to demonstrate so here you can see the connector this wire comes from the magnet coil what we have to do is we have to disconnect this connector so i have disconnected so here you can see the color code the red one being the positive terminal and the black one is the negative terminal set the multimeter into 200 volt ac current now i have fixed the positive terminals and negative terminals of the multimeter to the positive and negative terminals of the wire which is coming out from the magnet coil now i'll start the engine and i'll show you how the voltage fluctuates with the fluctuation of the rpm so here you can clearly see when the rpm increases the voltage output also increases okay now what we have to do is we have to increase the rpm to somewhere around 2000 rpm we we'll have to turn the idling screw for that Okay, seems like the bike is idling somewhere around 2000 rpm. Now we have to turn this air fuel mixture screw into fully closed position. That will be clockwise direction. Just make sure that you don't. tighten the screw until it is fully locked because the tip of the screw is very delicate and fragile it will damage the air fuel mixture screw so just make sure that you have just closed the air fuel mixture screw very loosely do not over tight it now slowly turn the screw anti clockwise direction and at one point we will see a constant output of current it won't increase or it won't decrease okay we will have to find out that point to get the proper tune from the engine so i'm turning anti clockwise direction half turn one full turn one and half turn now you can see with the increase in rpm the voltage output is also increasing Just very slowly and look into this voltage output properly. Two and half turn. We are seeing increase in RPM, also increase in output of the voltage.
नियर बाई टू कॉन्स्टेंट लेवल Okay, now I have set the RPM in such a position that the decompression pin is not making any noise, and the RPM is very stable. Uh, and one more uh, thing is that the carburetor has become very cold, so that is the indication of a perfect tune. Now you can see the RPM is set into very very low position, and the engine is running properly. And one more thing is that you can feel some moisture content coming out from the exhaust gases. That means the tuning is perfect. See when we tune the carburetor if you tune the carburetor to a very rich mixture the initial low end torque will be high but the top speed will be very less and also you will face issues like drop in mileage and the spark plugs will become foul very soon and later on you will face uh, starting issues and in case if you tune the carburetor into a very lean mixture the low end torque will be less the top speed will be high but the engine will uh, heat prematurely and there will be premature wear and tear of the engine but the mileage will be little bit high but when you tune the carburetor into a proper tune the balance in between rich and a lean mixture you will get a healthy mileage also you can expect a healthy engine and a long lasting engine so before ending this video i would like to introduce you my new possession it's a 95 model standard 350 which i have got it restored very recently i'll be doing a detailed walk around video very soon so please stay tuned also 
As you can see, I have done some modifications on my 2016 standard 350BS3. I will be doing a walk around video of the same as well. So please stay tuned to my channel. Many more interesting contents will be coming on my upcoming videos. So that's it for today guys. I hope you have found my video to be informative and interesting. If you have liked my video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to Mundodi Vlogs, please subscribe to Mundodi Vlogs for more such informative and interesting videos in the future. Thank you friends.